Hello, this is Robert Plank, the owner of Brutal Iron Gym. I wanted to give you guys a video to show a sample workout structure that can be uh, used by everybody and I think it would be a great structure for everyone to have kind of in their arsenal. So we're going to go through this pretty quickly, however this video will be posted on YouTube and you can kind of replay some sections or kind of like skip through the video to re-listen to things that you think you might have missed. So generally, the structure we're going to be explaining today is called cluster set workouts. So I'll explain in a second what that is, like what a cluster set is. But the benefits of this workout structure is it saves time. So you can get a lot of work done in a short amount of time. So if you only have 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 40 minutes, so if you have less than the traditional hour that most people take to work out, these are great structures you can use to still get a really good workout in. Then the other benefit we have is it's good for busy gyms. So this uh, format actually uses kind of one exercise at a time. So that way if you have a busy gym and your traditional style of training is like circuits or supersets and you don't have access to a lot of pieces at one time or people are kind of always jumping in the way, this uh, format allows you just to use one machine or one exercise at a time and that saves you when it gets busy. Then also we have modified to daily needs. So what this structure allows you to do is to use it however you need that day. So if you are feeling super energetic that day, you can use it a certain way. If you don't have a ton of energy, you can use it a different way. If you want to train your whole body or part of your body, you know, we have formats here I'll explain where you can do full body workouts, you can do upper or lower, you can do a single muscle group at a time. So it kind of depends on what you want to do that day. So if I didn't work out the day beforehand, I'm not going to work out tomorrow, I might choose to do a full body. But if I'm going to work out two days in a row, I might do upper body one day, lower body one day. You can use the same format, the structure we're going to talk about, for all those um, different splits, training splits. So that's a huge benefit. So it's universal to what you need. So what is the format? What is a cluster set? So what we actually do is you do a rep max, and we'll talk about which reps you choose. But let's say, for example, you do a 10 rep max on an exercise. So you do as uh, much weight as you can do for good form for that rep goal. So say the goal of 10 reps. You would then take a 15 second rest. You would then repeat the exact same way to good form failure. So this is GFF if you can read my handwriting. Um, good form failure means I only want reps that stay within the right muscles, the right form of the exercise. So if I got 10 reps, I take a 15 second rest, I might only be able to get two or three reps that next kind of little bout after 15 seconds. That's okay, that's kind of the point of this, is that you're going to reach muscular failure faster than that original rep goal. And we'll talk about why that's the goal here in a second. So you do your rep max, 15 second rest, you do the same weight for another bout of effort, so good form failure. Once you reach the good form failure, you now rest 30 seconds. You then try the same weight again and do good form failure. You then rest 45 seconds. You do the same weight again for good form failure. You then rest, then rest 60 seconds or one minute. And then you go again to good form failure. So you're going to get one, two, three, four, five sets of work in. And they're going to be divided by a 15 second rest, a 30 second rest, a 45 second rest, and then a 60 second rest. So all five sets are going to take less than five minutes. So you're kind of on that machine, you do one or two warm-up sets to kind of find what weight you need for your rep max, you then go through this cluster set format, and then you kind of move off that machine. So that's the benefit of this, is it's pretty quick. So in five minutes you get your warm-up, you get all your working sets for that exercise done, then you move on. So it's a very fast format, but it's still very thorough. You're going to get an extreme amount of muscle damage and muscle fatigue out of this set, and then that allows your body to have to adjust to that stimulus and get the results that you want. So, how do I know what rep max to pick? So traditionally, kind of the heavier way of doing cluster sets is picking 5 to 10 reps. So if I did something for 5 reps, that's pretty darn hard, that's heavy, and that's going to be more like strength based rather than like muscle mass based, so or muscular endurance. So I'll do 5 reps for 15 seconds, I might only be able to get 1 rep. Then I'll rest 30 seconds. Maybe I can still only get one rep because I'm still fatigued. I rest 45 seconds. Maybe I can get two reps. One good one, maybe a second one that's kind of a little bit starting to break down. I rest a minute, then maybe I can get two or three reps. So what this does is gets you a lot of low rep practice. So this is really good for exercises you want to improve your technique on. So because you're going to get uh, 
kind of a nice little touch on this stuff under heavier weights. So if you're a power lifter or a strength athlete and say today is like typically a lower body day but you want to sneak in some bench press because you feel like you need to get a little bit better at bench press. This is a great way to kind of warm up your bench, go through this technique and be done and you can do that in less than 10 minutes. So it's a really awesome way to sneak in and lift when you kind of aren't supposed to in a sense um, or just kind of hitting on a movement uh, on a day that's different than its main day. The other benefit of doing heavy stuff if you're more lo so looking for muscle uh, shape or muscle size is that's a nice heavy stimulus on the muscle that our body normally doesn't get. So typically in bodybuilding most people stay at weights roughly around like say 30 seconds of time under tension so 30 to 40 seconds maybe and um, that is good for bodybuilding, it's good for muscle growth but it gets kind of monotonous, it gets kind of boring on the muscles so it's good to change it up and add in like a heavier thing so that way you can kind of shock the muscles every now and then. You then have medium rep range of 10 to 15 reps and this is good for muscle shaping, muscle size and the difference will be your nutrition. So if I'm eating a caloric surplus and I do this and I get muscle damage my body will build new muscle, so more muscle if I'm eating at a caloric maintenance or in a deficit during like say a contest prep diet this helps me shape the muscle that I'm working but it isn't going to necessarily add mass or add body weight to me if my nutrition does not support that. Then we have high volume so sometimes you like this as high reps and sometimes people don't give it the um, uh, credit that it deserves. So higher reps done with heavier weight to good form failure is awesome stimulus for muscle growth. So don't discredit this if you're a bodybuilder. So this would be 15 reps plus. So maybe I do 20 reps, I wait 15 seconds, I'm having a heart attack probably. I then go to good form failure, I might be able to get 6 or 8 before my form breaks down because I can't breathe. And then I go 30 second rest, I'm trying to catch my wind a little bit now. Maybe I can get maybe 10, 12 reps. Then I take 45 second rest, maybe I can get again 10, 12 reps. So really high volume on this. That's going to be really awesome for flushing in a lot of blood in and out of the muscle and really doing that metabolic type damage of muscle. So if you're looking for muscle damage to get muscle growth or muscle shape change, you can do heavy weights that cause sheer forces to tear the muscle. That would be kind of like your 5 to 10 rep range, even maybe like the up to 10, 12. And then you're looking also, the other option is metabolic damage, which is just annoying the hell out of the muscle. So it's not so heavy it's tearing it, but you're just pumping in a lot of like, blood, the muscle's burning like crazy, you're really annoying it. And that's kind of your metabolic damage, that's the higher rep stuff. So that's kind of how you pick between these things. And then one of the different structures we have is, again, we said the benefit of this is you don't have to use this for, it's not only full body workouts or only upper or only lower body workouts. So if I'm doing a full body workout, I can do one of these cluster sets for a movement that works my thighs. So, and that means I'm going to work something that works my hamstrings and my quads, maybe even my glutes involved. So maybe I'll pick um, a squat, a deadlift, maybe leg press. I would then do, since it's full body, that takes care of our legs. We then do push muscles, which is our chest, our front of our shoulders and our triceps. So that might be a, like a dumbbell press, bench press, maybe even an overhead press if you're more of like an overhead sport rather than a bench press type sport or if you want more shoulders rather than chest. So that would be something push muscles. Then you go to pull muscles which is your back, the back of your shoulders and your biceps. So you can do a heavy row, maybe pull ups, pull downs, stuff like that. And then you'd have time to do an extra. So maybe you went through, you did legs, you did your push muscles, you did your pull, but you still want more legs, do more legs. Maybe you still want to like work on your back more because it's a little bit behind the front of your body. Do more back work. So you do a thigh, a push, pull, then extra. If you do an upper body, a good format is to do push muscles, then pull, then push, then pull. But you're not going to do the same category things. So what we're looking for here is maybe a push. Maybe this one is a horizontal push or a vertical push. And then the second one is the opposite. So maybe this push is a bench press. Maybe this pull is a pull up, so I did it in that plane of motion. So now this push, instead of a bench press, I'm going to do an overhead press to get to a different plane of motion. And then on this pull, since I did pull ups or pull downs, maybe this one I'm going to do rows. So those are typically what you'd switch between, is kind of horizontal pressing and pulling, and then vertical uh, pressing and pulling. So you alternate back and forth, push, pull, push, pull. Now if you're looking for lower body, one of the ways I recommend to do it is to do your isolation work first. So I'm going to do something just for my hamstrings, then something just for my quads, then thighs, and thighs again. Maybe the first thigh is kind of a heavier compound, 
Maybe that's going to be your 5 to 10 rep range for squats or deadlifts. And then maybe this, now that you're more fatigued, is going to be something that's guided like a machine, like leg press, hack squat, maybe even walking lunges, something that's a little bit lighter weight, so that way now that you're all the way fatigued from the previous stuff, this can be done safely. Okay? If you're looking at a single muscle group, maybe I just want to work my chest, or adjust my back, or adjust my biceps, or adjust my triceps. You want to look for something that isolates that muscle first. So maybe for chest, I'd do chest flies. I want to then do a compound movement, and traditionally, if you're going to do... You can see it goes iso, compound, compound, iso. If I'm going to do two compounds in a row, just like with the thighs, we did two thighs in a row, then you want to go ahead and do a heavy one on the first one, a lighter one on the second. So I'm going to do chest flies, maybe a barbell press or heavy dumbbell press. Then I'm going to go to another compound, which might be like a machine press, where I'm now guided and I can work on just kind of isolating out that muscle and try to really get a feel of it. But I'm, uh, in that movement, I'm allowing my triceps and my shoulders to kind of help my chest. Then I go back to an isolation. So maybe this is cable crossovers. Maybe this is machine flies. Maybe this is dumbbell flies. Maybe this is cable crossovers. So you're just going to switch back and forth between your isolations at the beginning and the end of the workout. Okay? Now if you have two muscle groups, you're going to kind of set them back to back. So I'm going to do an isolation of the first muscle group, an isolation of the second muscle group, then a compound motion for the first group, then a compound motion for the second group. So those are some sample formats that you can use to put together these cluster sets to create a full workout depending on, depending on what type of body parts or what your focus is for that day. So hopefully this was a, I know this was a really fast rundown, but hopefully it was helpful for getting your mind sparked. And what we'll do is we'll follow up this video with showing some formats of myself and my mom training, and you can see how we're going to use this, okay? So this gives you some basic information. Your job now is to put it into an experiment and try it and see it and see how you can tweak it for your own. If you'd like help with making this into a complete personalized program, reach out to us. Our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com and we will help you uh, make this more personalized if you'd like that. So if you want more information from us, we do have a daily podcast. Every single day we make a podcast. It's under the name Brutal Iron Gym, available on iTunes and Podbean. And we talk about stuff like this. We talk about mental aspects, nutritional stuff, really a little bit of everything. And we um, actually do topics based on what you, the listener, would like to know about. So you can listen to the podcast, tell us anything, ask us anything you want to know about, and we'll make a podcast for it. We can also, we have our Instagram and Facebook pages under Brutal Iron Gym as well. So if you find this type of information helpful, you can always find more from us as well on our podcast and social media pages. Okay, good luck if you try this. Um, look out for the next videos coming out where we're showing you the examples of this and how to put it into practice. Cool. Hopefully you guys like this. If you do, let me know and we'll make more videos this way.